Hey everybody, we're having a good day. It's Blancy, so it's time to continue our history play of It's Time Investigations, the collection. And last time we finished up the Kedna tournament, and we are now moving on to Turnout Reminiscence. And in terms of our trophies, we've also got about 10 out of 30. We managed the obviously get all trophy situation. They were 29, so we're busy about a third way through. Let's continue. Uh, Turnout Reminiscence, by the way, is more of a flashback case, but it's a still one we can do. Anyway, episode four, turn about to reminiscence. Hey, for a day, the young lady who calls herself the second Yanagarasu. The piece of cloth that she conjured up has taken me back to many years ago. Seven years earlier. Yeah, that's right. I did it. I killed the guy. But it was the great Yala the Yalagrasu that told me to do it. Objection! I asked the defendant, just what exactly are you trying to say? Don't you get it? I know the true identity of the Yalagrasu! The Yalagrasu is the man standing over the door of the prosecutor's bench. You say that I'm the yellow grassy? Don't you dare deny it! You told me to kill me, you snuck into the emissary! Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the yellow grassy? Let's go on say, objection! Miss Rail, I think we've heard just been enough of you in this. Your Honor, please listen to me! I'm telling the truth! You gotta believe me! Hmm. In accordance with the defendant's accusation, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. This court will be held in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. September 10th, 3 20 a.m. District Court, Fur 4 Lobby. Almost time for me to enter the courtroom. And so, that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be. That we've heard just been nothing. Right. As a replacement for, for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. Edgeworth. Sir. Have you read over all the, docu the documents regarding this trial? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything that there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the prosecution substitution is just about complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I, Manfred von Karma, will accept nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. If I do have the chance to stand in court at such an early stage in my career, I am honored and proud. Uh, as I have watched over your studies, I am giving you this very rare chance. Prove yourself. Press the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion. Yes, sir. There's such a legendary prosecutor who that such a legendary prosecutor will be watching and judging my performance. I have to be perfect in every way. This is so good! I could drink the whole, a whole gallon! I've never heard of water that tastes that good. Maybe I'll give him a minute. Oh, go, 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 go. Does he plan on coping the entire rest for dry? I met. Oh yeah, and my men are said it was more cliche. Keep it in my, keep it in my pocket. Rather, my, my mentor, who's never been for five years, legendary prosecutor. Golden board. There's there are trials scheduled posted on. 
Travel schedule for this week. There's only today's travel listed. This must be a mistake, or this country should just... The system is not working as it should. Out of the courthouse. It's pretty well constructed. And then a face. Don't tell me this thing transforms. And I wonder what other purpose they have to me. That's a prosecutor, sir! You got a good off. Ah, right, if you can tell that I'm a prosecutor with just one glance. As always, sir. As, as there are always one, only prosecutors and defense attorneys in this lobby. I need to hit the mark if I guess one or the other while there is a recess. You were only guessing? <sighs> Excuse me, madam, but it's something to matter. I just thought some would have brought a court of war, but. Before us, but then. But this is a courthouse! It would be quite typical to provide her with a court here. Are you sure? Someone bought me a fresh cup of coffee last time I was here. What the heck does she think a courthouse is for? Hmm. Sure is a beautiful leather sofa. I must say, one of those courthouses is meticulously well kept. So, position of the sofa uh, puts one under the great gauge of the judge. Every judge in this child's history has had quite the beard. And has gallantly parted with their beloved head of hair, I see. Being a judge must be a very stressful career. God, what a cold stare he's giving me. However, as a disciple of Funkara, there is no option but to win. There, that's good. Oh, this cold stare rivals my own. He's just he's sleeping while standing up. Shall we resume shortly? Please wait a moment, sir. <laughs> I was already well aware of that. Hopefully, or in a moment, which one is it? Pacific. Shall we resume shortly? Please wait a moment, sir. <laughs> I was already well aware of that. Oh. Bookshelf, huh? Compendium of Laws for Beginners. I don't have the time to read this and second guess myself now. This should lead to the defendants' lobbies. Edgeworth! Where are you compo where is your composure? Wish to take a look at your enemy, do so in the courtroom as you crush him. Indeed, thank you. You're a man of wisdom and experience, sir. Aren't these great? That ain't made all these. Awesome! But didn't you get fired right after you made them? Uh, yeah I did. I spent the same amount of money on this model and the cost to build the real thing. And my boss wasn't very happy. <laughs> hey Daddy, didn't you say you built a secret mechanism inside it? <laughs> I'll tell you about it someday when you're older. A secret mechanism? That'd be installed as payback for getting fired. Could be trouble. Now I'm curious. Today's trial should have ended in just one minute. Because the defendant was picked was picked up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. The girl had the gall to say that he only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous right, is his claim that the, his prosecutor bragged for a day, for a day to give the order. Ha! For a day, such a fool. He's been cornered by his own prey. Are you an acquaintance with Mr. Brain for a day? I'm sure you know. <laughs> He's a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense? He was trying to explain me, me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to just to the court. Those who cannot be brought to court. 
That is nonsense. For no man is above the law. Wow. There were always a few, there are always a few exceptions. However, there is no reason to even deal with such individuals. Our prosecutor is a, gu is a guardian of the court. And of the court. Will make no obligations to outside monitors. Yes, there is no reason to deal with such individuals, I see. It's worth. The scripture itself as for day has this will not be forgiven. Have no fear. I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused prosecutor brain for day. I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Very good. I've secured our recess for you to prepare to do just that. Do them all! The power from Karma! It's thanks to you. It's thanks to you that I finally become a prosecutor, sir. It's amusing that you wanted to come a defense attorney. That became my student. Hmm. It is a strange path you have traveled. It's true that I have once wanted to become a defense attorney. Now I am honored and proud to be a prosecutor. See, then as a student of mine, I suggest you remember this whale. A prosecutor's badge is not to be flaunted. The dignity of a prosecutor lies in the man himself, not in the badge. I understand. I will keep that. I will keep that in mind. Besides, my put holes in your fine garments. It's simply preposterous. Prosecutors must also take pride in their appearance. I will keep this in mind as well. I'm constantly having to remind the others that the prosecutor's always at this. It's more fashionable to get your prosecutor's badge in your pocket. In other words, always shoot a prosecutor's badge with care and honor. I understand, sir. So have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I have memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Well then, explain the case to me. I want to see if you really know what you are talking about. Understood. A murder was committed on September 8th in front of the Kodopini and Fintari. Mr. Dead Man was a member was a staff member at the emissary. The defendant in this case, Mr. MacRail, was suddenly questioning up the night of the incident as he was deemed suspicious. He was quickly placed under arrest for possession of a murder weapon, a gun. For more at the time of the murder. Rafi Yadagrasu had successfully infiltrated the, co the Cope Dopani Emissary as well. At first, Mel claimed that he himself was Yadagrasu. But he did not kill Dead Man. I wonder what he expected to gain from such a dis desperate lie. It smells like he wants to go down while just fall in the spotlight if he has found guilty. There truly is no limit to people's anatomy. I disagree. Continue, Ashworth. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecutor presented that the jury police that captured the murder. But it's clear it shows Mr. Rell as the murderer. The act of Mr. Rell firing the gun could have... But it could be clearly seen from the visitor's gallery. Upon seeing that, the defendant retracted his statement and admitted to the murder. I did because I was told to. By the real Villagrasu, praying for a day. Hmm. That sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. While this man appears to simply be a murder of a cook who defines Emerson's staff member, he will ask you for bring it to the 
people are actually referring to it as the second KG8 incident. Second KG8 incident? I'm very sorry, sir. I fear I failed to study hard enough. Hmm. Well, even among police, the information that only a like furry are privy to. Could you please enlighten me, sir? Sir, what do you mean by the second KJ incident? In order for me to tell you that, you must first learn about the original kiss. Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. Alright. Oh. He never said stop my my question for not guilty. The victim miss is he you? Oh, okay. You've heard about the Amal group scandal before, correct? Yes, I have. Secretary of Ernest Amano, the Amano Group's director, was arrested. Under suspicion of smuggling. Correct. CCU G was that's the that CCU was an employee at the Amano Group. I was the sole witness to the smuggling operation. It was she who brought the criminal the crime to light. Aram, that she was sentenced before she could testify in court. Wasn't Hope the Pani Emissary staff member arrested for the murder? Yes. I called the man by the name of Manny Cochin was the suspect. However, due to lack of evidence, the case went unresolved. Lack of evidence? Ha! Ah. If only I was in charge of the case, I would have done everything in my power to prove his guilt. Sure that all criminals are found guilty. The mentor is really dedicated. Her day was the prosecutor on the case stand, and he was as pathetic as ever. Mr. For Day was in charge of the KG8 incident as well. That's right. And once again, the victim of the case you're currently assigned to. Someone who is scheduled to testify against that smuggling operation. And just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was to testify. I'm sorry, you're catching on. The victim was murdered just before his day in court against the smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did in the KG8 incident. That's why it's, be, it's being called the KG8 incident. Yes. Yet, there's one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? The so-called noble thief that is sending everyone in the uproar. Into an uproar. The great thief, Yanagarasu. Yanagarasu. Better find out more. It is true that the Yanagarasu showed up at the co- Core to the organization. Afternoon, Jason. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Next week, Swain episodes included. What could he or she have been after? Hmm. Note that to steal any suspicious and counting records and release them to pub publicly, publicly. Or more likely, to steal secrets from the Kubernetes MSI itself. Since the item that the other guys just stole from there went shit was sent to the police. Well, what's it that the other guys just sent to the police? I don't know the details. I think related to the other guys is getting the top secret treatment. Yet I find it very ironic. <laughs> By returning the stolen item to the police, it was proved. I'm sorry, so yeah, it was for positive that the Yalagrasu 
That image of the emissary on the same day as the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? That would be the that would have been the first time the other guys who have left behind I left Evans behind, correct? So, yes indeed. If you wish to learn about Yala, the Galagrasi, then I suggest you ask for a day. Mr. Fur Day? He happens to be the pastor here in charge of the Yalagrasi case as well. He's the prosecutor in charge of bo both the KG agents and, and the Yalagrasi case? Mr. Fur Day really has a lot has a, that really has a lot on his plate. What is it, little girl? You're scary, mister. Did you need something? Um... I want to trade these coins with you. A fistful of dimes, quarters, and pennies. It looks like you you exactly a dollar. Is this what you want? Thanks! That's exactly what I need. Would that child be here to watch the trial? How oh, just like for a child. You got to be running around inside the courthouse. Does no one have respect for this country's judicial system anymore? The paragraph for prosecution substitution is complete. Why? Right. Do you know, even know how much time there's that before the child resumes? I, I'm so sorry. I can have you mopping up this courthouse instead of protecting it in an instant. There's no bother, sir. Not being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. Hm. I've heard one you are. You better collect the evidence from for, for a day and prepare yourself. It's time for the debut, Edgeworth. Camber F4 PM, there's your court courtroom number three. What is going on? Why isn't Fur Day here yet? Also possible that the Fed is not prepared yet either. Elif, where is Mr. Fur Day? I'm not sure. I wasn't re really paying attention. <laughs> ah, you must be the one Mr. Fur Day recommended. Here to be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. I can't remember my judgment. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a pumper going off. Come to Vigrid, get her day with my grandson. Sir, it looks like the child's about to resume. However, yes, it would be all but impossible to prove the witness a liar. But Evans from Faraday. What is the blast of buffoon up to? It's an emergency, sirs! Uh. Hollands! There shall be no yelling in this sacred hall of law. Enough, remove that mouth from this courtroom at once. Please. Wait! You have to listen to me now! It's an emergency! Defendant lobby number two! Mr. Ferday and the defendant! The two of them! They're... They're both dead, your honor! What? 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 September 10th, District Court Hallway. Stay back. Ugh. It was a lie on the crime scene. Period. 
<coughs> does this Bobo think he is? This is becoming quite the hot spot. Isn't she Mr. Rail's defense attorney? Hey, you! No running in the hallway, pal! And who are you to tell me what to do? I'll never find what's going on like this. Time for some civil discussion. Let's go. Civil looks like it's seen his fair share of use. And looks like another part of the court. That's a scissor from the window. Ah! My eyes have locked with, the, with my reflection and eyes in this barred window. Soon upon Kara, I refuse to back down. I won. And lobby number one is through here. This took place in lobby number two next, lobby number two next door. I shouldn't allow myself to be sidetracked like this. I'm gonna move on. Most we'll serve the judge. There's a longer slogan of some sort of, of it. In, in tiny letters at the bottom. Every strike of my gravel brings closer. It brings the show closer to me. And my hair further away. Is this a promotional poster for court or a hair growth product? Fire hot is immature. If one would be hit in the head with this, I suppose the victim would lose a memory or two. But it's not so I'd ever be foolish. As to be struck by one of these. And you are. Hey, mate! Hey, pal! It's common courtesy to tell someone your name first before asking theirs. Here. I'm going to take you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a district prosecutor. Prosecutor? I've never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. Told you my name. Now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick Kumshi. And just recently, I achieved my dream of becoming a detective. Born in a dream. It's why I was born today. Wait. Maybe I should check and make sure I'm not really in some crazy dream first. Detective is entirely too incited to be at the at a murder scene. You mentioned that you only recently became a pro detective, did you not? Got it! A brand spanking new detective! <laughs> that means you've probably never seen a real prosecutor's badge, right? You so desire to see one, I just might be able to make you... I just... I just might be able to make your day. You don't have to go through the trouble, pal. Because a real man has a police badge! And today, I'm gonna to become an instant detective, just like Detective Bad. Um... Did I say something wrong, pal? Forget it, detective. Do you have any insight of this detective gumshoe? Mm, well, as a detective, I'd rather see something that is actually related to the kiss, pal. I never thought this was related enough. Oh, yeah. Hey, anyway, we're probably just gonna need to detect gumshoe. Would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would be... But it would be who? You to fill me in on what you're... You know. Wow, you're a proud one for such a youngster, aren't you? But anyway, Detective Bad is the one in charge. And you just... So you're just gonna have to have... You're just gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? That's right. I was guarding the door to the pendant lobby number two. Hmm. Give it a on guard detail. You notice anything strange while you were on duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard gunshot, and then I kind of froze. Your detective and a measly gunshot scared you that much? And again, I can hardly complain to not know what it's like to hear one of those at close range. The detective back came running to the scene. When lot made a retreat together, and both men were like dirt. Dead. Is that everything? Um, yeah, that's it. I was in the hallway the whole time. 
I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Interesting. Other than the gunshots, we didn't hear a single sound of commotion. Do you have a minute? You know, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ah, I apologize for not introducing myself before. Nor bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Verde's place in court. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. The Verde's substitute is a newbie, huh? And how do you know, madame, that I studied under my friend from Karma? Do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> Do not take me for some novice, naive rookie, novice. <laughs> oh, you, you're a student of on karma. I should have. Those clothes are dead! Get away! <laughs> Stop right there! These are the garments of one who gladly presents the facts! Oh, thanks for the great laugh. But try not to make me laugh so much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of the sort! <laughs> just kidding. I was just giving a run. By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Callista Oyu. And if you're telling me the, the truth, then we are about to go head to head in court. Ah, oh, but of course. I've heard much about you, Miss Yu. Ah, oh, of course. I've heard so much about you. You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? Yeah. It's a shame that we will not be able to face each other. It would be my first child, too. Oh, what's that declaration of war? How nice it is to be young and carefree. How about a nice, squeaky clean bod you've got yourself there? I'm jealous. And sure, it gleams with the. Its gleam will dull over time with experience. Are you saying your reputation will also tarnish over time with it? That's not what I meant! Well, it's just kind of void some things in life. I never allow my badge or my reputation to become tarnished. It's you? What do you think about this piece of evidence? Actually, Ashworth, I'm interested in finding out what you think about it. Hmm. I don't really know all that much about it. Hmm. Then I don't really know much know all about it that much all that much about it either. <laughs> Sorry, it guess it can't be of any service. Too much. This will start laughing again. Alright. I'd like you to update me on the situation. I don't really know anything. Why don't you try asking those detectives over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? What's so funny? It's just that the way you speak is so tactless. The person I was going against in court until only a little while ago was also murdered. It's not like I go back into the courtroom pretending as though nothing happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, but who are you? Detective Ta Taron Blood. Homicide. I was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible. And how did you arrive and inspect the and how did you arrive and inspect the body before me? Her day's request for me to testify in the trial. Plain and simple. Mr. So Verde requested you be here. Showing that off make it feel like a big, strong prosecutor. Oh, of course not. I was simply proving my title as prosecutor to you. See, 
but most trashers don't go around flaunting those things. It's, it's like a detective walking around outside with his badge flashing in the spotlight. Show that off too much, and before you know it, you'll be elbow deep in angry criminals. That would definitely be a problem. It takes a bat. Let me ask you about this piece of evidence. Please pay attention. I'm listening, but I've got enough to say in the story. Very well. Who said that in the first place? Yep, same thing. I've already conned the his cute about the situation. I've got nothing to say to you, kid. Kid? I'm Mr. Ferday's substitute in today's trial. Therefore, I must. I insist that you update me on the situation. Cut back down here. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about hi? To talk to adults, kid. Is he threatening me? Is he going for a gun? It's just a mirror. How dare he trick me like that? Birdie was stabbed to death with some kind of blade. And he had a gun in his hand. The other man, Mr. Mac Frail, was also sh was shot and killed. He was found holding a blade knife in his hand. Was there anyone else who went into the defendant lobby number two? Yeah, a big look over there. His name's Gumshoe. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then... They must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence. This guy really is really testing my patience. Why was I informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides are my only gig. The yeah, Allegrazi case is also one of my assignments. Hmm. You were called upon to comment on the Yalagrasu characteristics. An orange who says that Mr. Verde really was the Yalagrasu or not. Well, well. Looks like you just might have a brain after all in the head of your son. Son, I'm not your son, Pops. It's you! There is someone here who wishes to see you. Who is it? I've coped up with an MSI member by the name of Manny Coaching. What? What's going on? Look at that, Miss Shu's moves just changed all of a sudden. <laughs> What's the matter, Coaching? I'll be right there. Since I see you again, Miss Yu. Why are you here? I have no desire to see you again. Oh no. Ashley, would you mind stepping inside for a brief time? Alright, let's go. Bad. Bon karma. It's been a long time. I knew you would show up. You just do when the yellow grass is involved. And I see this case is no exception. You know Detective Bad, sir? Yes, he's like an old bloodhound that never leaves that scene of crime. If only he got a promotion and if only he get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene where a detective is most useful and effective. Hmm. Not like I don't know that. Move on, move on, 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 Obad. The man that I just passed by. Was he not the suspect from the KG8 incident? I was right. Just what's that man doing wandering around here? That bird, eh? I can't believe you let such an easy catch get away. Imbecile! 
I have approved this guilt in three minutes. Oh, karma. Thank you stand enough for now. It's in poor chance to speak like that about the depart. Very well. Back on topic. I'm placing Ezra in charge of the investigation here. Objection! Papa? How can you... You place him in charge? Francisca. What are you doing here? I'm here for certification. What else? Francesca von Karma. So she's here is here on vacation from Germany. She is the daughter of Manfred von Karma and a student of his. Who's also junior to me. You're the one who's junior to me, and don't you forget. You're not convincingly avoiding the bar, Sam. Examination, are you? Huh. If you were able to pass, then I, I'll have absolutely no troubles at all. I'll never let myself to lose you. Never! Why do you always have to be this competitive? Hey, Papa. If you really are assigning Miles Edgeworth to cover the case... Yes, I am. Oh, you're really sorry. Why do you ask? You know, I'm close to becoming a prosecutor myself. I am 100% confident that I can do a better job than him. It's just like Francesca. She has no problems bad mouthing someone right in front of them. Bon? Yeah. These two will be conducting the investigation. What? Want me to let both of these kids loose on the crime scene? This is a perfect opportunity for them to work on their prosecu prosecutorial skills. That crime scene is not a place for children to be messing in. I'm the one with the authority over this crime scene, bad. And I will not tell you complaining. Complaining. That's her. Francesca. I'll lead this kiss to the two of you. Understood, sir. Yes, Papa. I'll go take care of the paperwork now. Remember, I'll stop nothing but a perfect report from the both of you. Do not disappoint me. Hold up, fuck hunter. I still haven't agreed to this. Miles Edgeworth. It's been quite some time, Francisca. This will be a perfect chance for us. See which was truly worthy of the Von Karma in the end. But could you at least say hello? No, no, long time no see. Very good. Just because you be you became a prosecutor first doesn't mean you can't act all pro. You can act all pro. She ha she hasn't changed a bit. Miles Edgeworth. As I said, we shall see which one of us is worthy of the Pankara name. Her pride, Lord. I've been reduced to a babies there. Looks like Mr. Pankara was successful in convincing the detective. That's just like him. He never fails. Now, I appreciate it if you could run, quickly run me over the facts of the bad. You're better off checking things out on your own. Very well. It seems like getting help from the heck of the bad will be a more arduous task. September 10th, 4.15 yeah, 4 p.m. That's your court panel lobby number two. It's the only real explanation that they killed each other simultaneously? 
Matt says, refuse to listen to someone until they are finished talking. Um, what are you talking about? I only said, I only said once more. This is a comp competition. See, who is truly worthy of the fun car in the Competition? The person that figures out the truth first wins. Hmm. The person who doesn't discover the truth is a dishonor to the name. Exactly. I occur less you become that you become a prosecutor before me. I simply refuse to hear any more foolishness things come from your foolish foolish mouth. Hmm. Fine, whatever makes you happy. Can I take that as you set the my challenge? Once again, whatever makes you happy. Huh. Well then let's begin the investigation, shall we? I'm gonna find the perfect evidence and, and prettily present it like the professional I am. I'm going to discover the truth behind the cr crime. How delightfully childish. Just look at Kids, over here. There. Hold on. Kid! Huh. Since you're right, Mouse, he just called you a kid. I said, kids! Kid. I do you call me a kid as well. I'll do you a my please. I will allow you to cause the ruckus on my crime scene. Hey, big guy. You're gonna watch over these two. Yes, sir, Detective Bot, sir. Now do I... Now do I say for my own kids. You better not get in our way, Scruffy. You'll feel about it my whip if you do. Me? Then you... Prosecutor boy. Let's get your investigations out already, all right? Great. Now even that detective is dreaming like a kid child. All right, it's time to get investigating. Get in the room, prosecutor boy. My name is Miles Edgeworth. And if you call me prosecutor boy one more time, it will be my duty as a prosecutor to look into your monthly salary. One! I'm bummed to do my salary after you saw how much it was. That's up to you now, isn't it? Really? Sounds good, pal. He's so naive. Is it bad? Is it the map? May I have a worry? What is it? It appears that both the knife, a knife, and a gun were used as murder weapons. Yeah, it does. That leads us to the first question of the investigation. Where did the man acquire the weapons? The gun was inside for a further day's bag. It was a piece of evidence that was presented in the trial earlier today. It was used. The code to put an MSI staff member. But I never heard anything about the knife. The red was being held by pol the police. There's no way he could have brought it in. Which means it's possible that Furday had the knife on him in the start as well. Could it have been a piece of evidence that had yet to be presented? Then, why doesn't the detective bad know about it? Wait, what if. It's puzzled that Mr. Ray brought the knife in under the guise of prosecutorial evidence. He then brought it out to attack Mr. Raven. <laughs> Maybe he got brain in there after all, kid. <laughs> Is he going to treat me like a child forever? Let's say Mr. Day for day attack Mr. Ray forced. He then could attack. That's the only logical conclusion you can draw from a scene like this. Hmm. Not yet. It feels much too early to be drawing conclusions already. Let's first find conclusive evidence that has to protect the honor of the Von Karma name. Yeah, pal? And so is that, pal? This is my first real crime scene. Let's get investigating. And Detective Gumshoe. 
I thought investigations were supposed to be conducted in a calm, collective manner. Hmm? What do you know by running an investigation, little pros boy prosecutor? I know that at the very least, I have a greater grasp of, grasp of than you what happened here. I, you don't even know more than me, pal. You stay behind me, boy, and get out of the way. I don't know. I'm running from, coming from the guy that's been a step behind me this entire case. This is my first time standing free inside a court, the courthouse. Who would have thought it'd be my, for my first kiss as a detective? No, I get the feeling I'll be coming here a lot more in the future. As a suspect detective? Of course not, pal! Anyway, this lobby is actually pretty luxurious. I mean, for a defendant's lobby, it's got a pretty big TV. Oh! And there's a tea set on the table over there. I didn't know that I drink, I could drink tea. Well, this room is really decked out. If it means spending time in here, maybe being a suspect isn't such a bad thing at all. And being a suspect that leading the detective in charge of anything might be bad. But he is right. This room is re very well furnished. Summer's room, the truth is slumbering. It's time to find it. I get a wake up and give it a wake up call. So, did you take the gum shoe? Yeah, what is it, boy? Here, of all the people that call me dad, this detective is by far the least qualified. I wanted to ask you about the investigation and how the investigation is proceeding. See for yourself, pal. Oh, oh, no, do I? Do I do a great detective battle what? Is this man not a professional bone in his body? Very well. And I will inspect the victim's body myself. There's some stuff in the bag, pal. I suppose this was Mr. Ferday's bag. It's probably Charles Evans I was supposed to collect from him. This is the evidence! I better not touch it. At least prints on it. You just, you just not pay attention to anything you do? There are some plastic bags stacked on this up on this table. Hi. Right. There's a tea set too. There doesn't seem to be any signs of disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tiny. You see that? Plus the bags on top of the table are completely undisturbed. Maybe. They were super quiet for their scuffle. Although, I didn't hear anything from out of the, the hallway, you know. Maybe the plastic bags scattered on the floor are throwing us off. This decorative plant foliage is quite nice. It's actually smoothing to be around in. Perhaps you purchase one from my room. It's like the sofa is ready to be disposed of. It's so soft, I could sleep for all 25 hours of the day in this thing. Only I could dispose of him. The window is open and. There's a fresh flowery scent in the air. Ugh, the flowers in the garden down there are so gross and ghastly. Do you, have any, do you think maybe you could try off doing something useful for a change? Well, at least there's no way someone escaped from this window, pal. They wouldn't wake, wake up to the smell of flowers after a fall from the first floor. Are you willfully ignoring the fact that, it, that there is also iron bars on the window? Yeah, I guess there's that too. Either way, no one could get through these windows, right? They thought of everything when they 
We're deciding this courtroom. Very nice. Oh! What, what is the detective come shoe? My TV room is so tiny compared to this one, pal. Perhaps you should purchase a more normal size TV like this one. Well, let me see here. Oh, this thing is huge! Ah! Oh, I'm way too noisy! You're the noise one, Scruffy! Don't touch it! Your fingerprints all over it. But I didn't touch it. The foundation of the crime scene is the foundation of detective work. Condition, huh? Sounds like something the rookie here needs to grow up on. The TV has been left on. Why are you looking at me like that? It wasn't me. I didn't touch anything. Jay, you do know what happened. What will happen to you if you touch something again? Right. I won't touch anything. I won't even go anywhere near the TV, sir. I'm doing. Get back to your investigation. All right. I was planning to do so anyway. With the bat, do you have a, any thoughts on the case? Her damn rail. It's like they killed each other to me. Although, there are a few things that just don't seem right. Hmm. What would they be? Hmm. Why don't you try thinking on your own first before bothering you bother me, boy? What? Now I've been downgraded to just boy? Ah, uh, I see. Did you figure something out? This is a competition, Miles. And as such, I appreciate it if you didn't talk to me. As you wish. Hmm. Why are there plastic bags scattered all over? Those bags are for keeping evidence sit, pal. I know that, but detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally, I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy... Anyway, these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? <sighs> Looks like Mr. Verday fell on top of Miss Ray. First glance, it seems like they must have killed each other. However, using logic, the only other conclusion is... AHA! What? What's the outburst for? A detective instinct just tipped me real hard. And it, it was real that fell first, see? You don't need a detective instinct for that. It's common sense. I suppose we won't know much more than that until I examine the bodies. Looks like Mr. Ray died with the knife in his hand. There's some blood stuck on it. And he must have used this as a weapon. Yep, no doubt about it. Is there carrying this on his personage? Did he bring this as a piece of evidence for the trial? Or did he bring it with a very different intention than mine? I should shut some notes down about it. Looks like Mr. Verde died while holding the gun in his right hand. So he shot Mr. Ray, then fell on top of him while still gripping onto the gun. I guess that does kind of seem strange, huh? I mean, why did Mr. Verde know how to fire her gun? It's not exactly rocket science. Even I know how to pull a trigger. Although I doubt I'll ever need to use one. I hope I never have to fire a gun either, pal. But it sure does look cool to hold a gun in your hand. It appears that the police screen procedures need a thorough review. I mean, I should jot down some notes about the handgun on Mr. Verde's hand. Why are there plastic bags scattered all over? All around. These bags were keeping them in sit, pal. I don't know about exactly. You're good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? I'm gonna be happy when. Don't put the comma when it's this guy. Hey. Oh, where I had that. Mr. Furday. How ironic it is for him to lose his life in the courthouse. Yeah! Why well, it had to be like this? I don't know what to say. 
Can't believe this happened while I was on watch, pal. Rather than being yourself up, you should spend your time continuing the investigation. Didn't you become a detective in order to solve crimes? Yeah. And get back to work. Find out the cause of this murder. Right, I'm on a pal. Where did he kill the put upon embarrassing staff member? And then he murdered himself? No, then he was murdered himself. This guy wasn't exactly an angel, you know. Oh, what makes you say that? Well, he's been hauled in into the panic several times for theft and assault, pal. But yeah, he's definitely the type to have committed a murder or two. Well, he did admit to killing Mr. Dead Man. A good point, pal. I knew a detective intuitions was telling me something. Detective intuitions? Yep. Do you know about it? It's a special feeling that I'll detect. We don't have time for that conversation right now. Return to the investigation. His head is all black down here, see? I wonder what it could be. Hmm. Look closely. The splash pattern resembles an ink stain. Ah, ink stain? Yes, I used to get ink on my own head when I'm using my better pen. Better pen? I've never seen one before. Sure you are just making it up, pal? Mr. Rell's cause of death was from being shot, correct? That's what we think, but it's hard to tell of him lying fierce stone. If it's bad enough, it's truly lamentable that some would try to hide the truth. Um, you sure they are? Tr they were trying to hide something. I can confirm. I can't confirm Mr. Rell's cause of death with his body precision like that. Let's take the back. I like to assemble the body in further detail, if possible. What's this? You're not able to form a theory with the way. Within the way they are. I believe an examination of the bodies is vital to finding the perfect evidence, don't you? <laughs> I suppose you have a point. Well, I hurry up and get on with it. Devils. Yes, sir. We've taken enough photos of the scene, sir. And there you have it. Do not approve? Of course not. What? Investigation of a crime scene is the work of a detective, so don't touch a thing. Hey, big fella, turn over the body for me, will ya? Okay. Please forgive me, Mr. Faraday, sir. I'm sure do not get emotional and fall. Involved. Emotionally involved. Remember, you're a detective. Yes, sir, understand, sir. Something on his breast pocket. It's a fountain pen. You know, I always keep a pencil behind my ear. It's because the detective Bow is always telling me you should always write your name on everything you own. Yes, somehow you do struck me as quite a forgetful individual. There's a knife phone in his chest here, see? I wonder if the wound. Matches the knife Mr. Real is holding. Hey, Bill. Yes, sir. Verifying now, sir. Make it quick. The looks of things. One could deduce that the knife Mr. Real is holding is. Mm, sorry, so is what killed Mr. Faraday. Faraday is holding a gun in his right hand. That's what Mr. Ray got blown away by, right? Oh wait, your answer? Yes, sir. We find that the ball is the markings do must that gun. Oh, uh, what's the markings are um are the finger are the finger the fingerprints a gun leaves a bullet when fired. Every gun leaves its own unique ballistic markings. Therefore, by looking at the markings on a bullet, you can tell which gun it came from. Yeah, that's it. Of course, I already knew all about that, pal. 
Maybe you should be better off. That means maybe you'd be better off going back to the economy. Hey, come on, sir. Cut me some slack, will ya? The bullet that was fired from the misgun is what failed Mr. Rail. Shot in the chest. It takes some guts to fire a gun in a courthouse. I mean, I've been detected for a whole week and I still haven't fired a single round yet. There aren't any burn marks on his clothes. That must mean... The burn marks? A round hot... Glows very, glows very hot as it is discharged from the firearm. Therefore, burn marks are usually left, left when a gun is fired, is fired from point-blank range. I come as a ray must have been, been shot from at least a yard or two away. You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for your age, pal. Apparently this detective has, has as much common knowledge as your everyday marsupial. Let us now try to understand how the two men died. First, Mr. Ray took the gun and the knife out of today's evidence trial. And then aimed the gun at Mr. Rail and fired. However, Mr. Ray managed to grab the knife and counter for a day while being shot. And the two men fell almost together where they stood. And that is my theory in any case. What a crazy way to go! So, something about that explanation just, just doesn't seem right. Hmm. I believe I have a firmer grasp on what's happened here. It looks like Mr. Ray was stabbed with this knife. That Mr. Ray was holding. Ouch! What's wrong, detective? My stomach started out at the heart. Just, I'm just thinking about being stabbed. Just keep your mind on the case, all right? All right, it's time to use logic. There was a very tidy pile of plastic bags on the table. And yet a portion of them wound up scattered on the floor as well. It's not likely that the ones on the floor were knocked over during a struggle. In this case, might there, there not be another explanation as to how they got here? Um, another reason? I think it's possible that the blood on the outside of the ba bag is related somehow. Hey, please get that blood away from me, pal. Get the gumshoe? Who's blood on this bike? Uh, hold on. Let me ask the lab guy. All right, please hurry. What did you get a little pal? It's fur days. Oh, and the tech, the tech, the tech, the technical guys, the tech, the technician said that they didn't find anything else on or in the bag either. Hmm. It appears that this bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so, I'll leave it in your hands, pal. Yes, and yet, we can do it. The splotch on Mr. Verde's head. I wonder if it might be from the ink of his fountain pen. Oh, let me ask the lab guy. The heck, the gumshoe! I confirm that the substance on Mr. Faraday's hand is the ink from his fountain pen. I see, good work! Ah, you know, I always wanted to say that. Even if it's just one time in my life. It was just... Mr. Faraday wrote his, his fountain pen in his left hand. I think it's fair to assume that he's left-handed. It appears that Mr. Faraday's pen is a very important... It's very important to our case as well. Okay, if you say so, pal. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. There's still something I find peculiar here. The theory that they simply killed each other is too simplistic in this case. 
In fact, there is actually a contradiction that shows there is another possibility. No way, pal, really? Hmm. I suppose I would just have to show you the contradiction in this crime scene. Oh no, I was meant to see it first. No, we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of, and it is this! Mr. Verdette used his left hand to write with his fountain pen. Ego, he is left-handed. And yet the gun handgun is in his right hand! Don't you find it odd that the left hand and Mr. Verde would hold the gun on his right hand? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the great contradiction haunting this crime scene. Hey, Red Pal, that does seem kind of strange. But how could something like death ha that happen? Facts add up to one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Verde's hand after he died. Someone else? Plastic bag scattered over on the floor and a gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shelly figure behind this case. A person of foul intent who is seriously about keeping the truth from us. September 10th, this record. Defendant lobby number one. Okay. Here's the autopsy report. It is probable that Mr. Ice survived for a short time after he was shot. However, Mr. Freddy died instantly from his stabbing. Interesting. Alright. It looks like we now know everything we need to know about this kiss. Are you sure we know everything? Of course! This began with Mr. Freddy attempting to get his revenge. Then the, then the prosecutor then went into a rage from being accused and tried to kill the defendant. But the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. It's all very clear and simple. This is absolutely no... There's, there's absolutely no margin for doubt. Do you really believe that to be the truth? Huh, are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you? That you do want to believe it's true. Yeah. That's alright. If you disagree with my arguments, then prove me wrong. Well, if there are any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry, I will. What happened? Mr. Verde's death was instantaneous while Mr. Ray survived for a short time. Oh, right, yeah. From this, it is obvious that Mr. Freda died after he shot Mr. Rail. And Mr. Rail, while on the brink of death, saw Mr. Freda's knife and stabbed him. Those are the facts of this case. Mr. Freda's death was instantaneous? Therefore, he must have attacked first. Proving that logic to be false is probably the fastest way to show her that she's wrong. In that case, I sh... Now, first look at it for any holes in our own theory. Hold it! You truly believe that Mr. Ferret died instantaneously? I have the murder report right here. Mr. Verde died instantaneously of shock due to being stabbed in the chest. Therefore, you start there, you see? It's been documented. Clear as day. Hold it! Mr. Verde was sh Mr. Verde shot Mr. Rail before he died. If 
Do you have any basis for that statement? Your foolishness has no end, does it? Nah, I hate to repeat myself, however. Mr. Friday's die instantaneously. That's all the pieces I need. Alright, so if Mr. Friday died instantaneously. Alright. Then should he then he must have attacked Mr. Ray before he being stabbed. You finally begin to catch on, I see. Do you believe that, Ms. that the dying Mr. Ray stole the knife from Mr. Faraday? Mr. Red became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do amazing things when they are put to the test. So the two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Ray was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The medical conditions room is a testament to their struggle. Yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? Nothing, however, I can't leave what you say slide by without further inquiry. One must be clear and precise. And if you could append that statement to your testimony. Fine. They struggled and Mr. Ray used lots of his strength to counter the counterattack Mr. Faraday. About this statement. Mr. Ray used all his remaining strength to take the knife and defend himself. One can easily say that one can easily see that they have a final struggle. Of course, it's nothing compared to what my running crop can do. How does one compare the damage her crop can do to the state of this room? Furthermore, all of these, all the plastic bags on the floor in this room were scattered there due to the fight. There, is there any, is there, is there any facts I can explain for you? Not that, no, that will be fine. Hold it! Claiming suspicion as fact already? Don't you feel that the evidence is a bit lacking? You'll find all the evidence you need just by looking across this around this room. And Mr. Freddy co collapsed on the, on the top of Mr. Ray. Condition. Was her I instantly making it making a counterattack impossible? Furthermore, the room is a total mess from their fight. <laughs> I dare say that there's that there's more evidence here than you could whip a whip at. Looks like she's becoming more and more confident. And looking at this place, she might have a right to be. After all. Everything here seems to support her theory. It looks like you sh you're starting to see my point. I'm I was good as good as one in our little competition. There's something strange about Francisca's theory. I should compare her claim with the data I've gathered thus far. I just know there's a contradiction somewhere. Blood here is from Mr. Day. 
but there are no other clues to be found. That's the question. Do I need to put this bike inside another bike in order to preserve it as evidence? The Mrs. Wizard Egg was in the habit of using this. I was using very nice fun the pants are. That's the total opposite of me. I don't get these things at all. <laughs> well, I think the pencil behind your ear suits you just fine. Really, you think so, pal? Man, I knew it was worth something. That wasn't exactly common with Detective. Hmm. It looks like a quality nib. And that was it, pal. Oh, this thing's really. I, I got it go over my hand. Does it come true? Don't ever play with the evidence like that again. It's a clear country. Okay, you know. Never heard that. Would that contradiction be? Maybe. Nowhere. Exactly. Could I have it wrong? That's right. I'll lose the truth for all eternity. I need to pay more attention to her testimony. Objection! Let's just take a look at this piece of. Evidence. One of you trying to stay. I'm saying that this piece of evidence doesn't contract with my testimony. Arr! Miles Edgeworth. Just face it, I'm going to win our little competition. I have to calm down and do a better job of finding a flaw in our lodging. Okay, nope. I'm just finding dinner. Two men were fighting. They, sh their struggle would have surely been the cause of would have caused quite a bit of noise. However, the detective comes to testify that he heard absolutely nothing. In fact, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to for this one we'll keep the original, and then for the last one we will use the range. Hmm. You play some. You place too much faith in that detective's testimony, you know. But for the sake of argument, let's say there wasn't a fight. And hi, there was a rag in his hands on the knife. Mr. Fredegg's bag was sitting right there in lobby number two. It is... It is not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Ray saw a chance to took 
and took it out at some point. So, what you're saying is this. Mr. Ray took a chance when he saw the opportunity. Sorry, sorry, so, uh, yeah, when he saw the opportunity and took the knife from the bag. And then stop Mr. Ray. And then stop Mr. Ray. Sorry, and then, sorry. And then Mr. Ray shot Mr. Ray after being stopped. Isn't there something strange in Francesca's statement just now? Wait, something doesn't add up. Oh, really? It's simply not possible for today to have shot Mr. Ray after being stabbed. Um, what is this supposed to be? Take a closer look. I'm still not seeing it. Hm. In that case, I'll just have to try to explain it to you. Objection! Miles Edgeworth, you should know by now that you can't fool me. I guess this evidence was unreal after all. I have to pick this up one more time. I just the knife from some race bag if he oh, wasn't paying attention. That was right. Take that! I had the right idea, the wrong evidence! God damn it, I had the right idea, wrong evidence. I thought it was the gun. It's the crime scene notes. Take that! According to the coroner, coroner's reports, Mr. Frey died instantaneously, meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife. I go, he could not. And he could not possibly have fired the gun after that. Oh, you got me. Well, of course. Well, then, if the report is correct, then there is only one correct explanation. It's a Suppose that Mr. Ray attacked first, then Mr. Ferday, who died instantaneously, would have been unable to kill Mr. Ray. Therefore, Mr. Ray must have been stopped. Must have stopped Mr. Ferday after he was shot. Then they both died. That's the only. That is the only explanation that makes logical sense. Negating in your opponent's idea in order to prove your own theory. I see you've been studying, Francesca. I just wanted to explain it to you as simple as possible before you feel as he propose a full experience that only a foolish fool like you could. Hmm. How naive of you to believe that your oh, that only your opinions are valid and still expect to discover the truth that the crime scene offers you. Francisca, you've still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying that there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. So Ferday died instantly? And the fact that he did is what gives rise to, to the contradiction in the scene. The contradiction here is... Hmm. We'll be smart this time, right? I, I sold the points though. Alright. We want to do the full ones. Anyway. So let, let me get this straight. What you're arguing is this. Mr. Ray took the gun from his Evans bag and shot Mr. Rail. Then the wound yeah, found the opportunity to take the knife and strike back. Upon, upon being stabbed, Mr. Ray died on the spot and Mr. Ray de died thereafter. If that's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which the body 
Their bodies are fouled. No! Mr. Furday is li body is lying on top of Mr. Rails. Therefore, Mr. Rail must have died before Mr. Furday. Impossible. Yes, I agree. That's it. Seems strange. No matter what angle you approach it from, it means that the real mystery behind this crime. Is We must solve it. Objection! Not so, not so fast, Mouse Edgeware. What now? I simply think that you ought to think a bit more outside the box. And that it's even clearer now that the incident started with Mr. Friday murderous intent. Now she's bounced back. She sure bounced back quickly. An explanation won't be enough this time. It's going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her wrong. What happened in part two? It was just chance that Mr. Friday's body fell on top of Mr. Rails. The two bodies fell into a pile. Which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. I just know that Francisca's explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. Let's do that. Then I can present her with the evidence that proves the contradiction. I'll have an according to Francesca. <laughs> Hold it. Objection. Oh shoot. About that objection. Pressing someone's testimony in order to gain some time to think. You're a real one-trick pony, aren't you? It's too bad your trick only works on fools. That wasn't my intent. I simply wish for more details about as to, as to how Mr. Friday ended up on top of Miss Rail. Hmm. Someone's impatient. I was just about to explain everything to you. So do you think you could hold on for a minute? Francisca, I'll make you a deal. I'll hold on if you hold on to that whip of yours. Oh, I'll hold on to it, all right, as I whip you. Ah! Well, now that you've quieted down for a bit, I'd like to continue, if you don't mind. The two fell on top of each other? They're, don't you find that to be a bit strange? No, not at all. I can see it in her. I can see it in her eyes. She steps out against me from the bottom of her heart. Miles Edgeworth, when I'm done here, you'll see that there's nothing changed at all. Now then, the two men fell into a pile. What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? I assume Mr. Friday had two different weapons in his hand. He made the attack to Mr. Rail. So he made the attack Mr. Rail while holding both the knife and the and the rover, and then after Mr. Friday fired the gun, Mr. Rail grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Friday. That's how Mr. Rail ended up on the bottom with Mr. Friday on top. At close range, that is more than possible.
Yes, it's possible, but... Well, if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got! Oh, I will. And to that extent, I'd like for you to amend, append what you just said in your testimony. Hmm. I don't see any point to that, but as you please. The fact indicates that they attacked each other at the same time at close range. Hold it! You're saying that they attacked each other at the same time from close range? Exactly. Mr. Furday pointed the gun at Mr. Rail's chest and pulled the trigger. Mr. Rail then took the knife from Mr. Furday and stabbed him before he fell unconscious. The dead, it's Mr. Furday instantly fell on top of Mr. Ray from the stabbing. Pinning Mr. Rail under him, where he died shortly after. And that's how they ended up on the top on top of each other, with no contradiction to be seen. Do you really believe they fell in the exact opposite order in which they attacked? Miles Edgeworth, if you're not listening to a word that I've said, I'm saying. Arr! They both attacked each other at the same time, and Mr. Mel fell by first by chance. Leaving Mr. Furday to just happen to fall on top of him. Then Mr. Ray fell, died shortly thereafter, pinned underneath Mr. Furday. That's how it happened. So the two men attacked each other. When, with Mr. Rell randomly falling down first, the fact that the order they attacked each other in varies from the order they fell doesn't and doesn't cause a problem for me. However, there's definitely one certain aspect that I'm having trouble swallowing. Eh. Nah, we got the gun. Ah, tunnel fishing. Occasionally. So you believe they fell... So they killed each other at close range? Sorry, but that's impossible. Just as it is written in the crime scene notes, the firing of the handgun did not leave a gunpowder burn on Mr. Rell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Rell and the gun... Must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards. Ah! Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. The bodies are piled up on each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. There being no chance that Mr. Rail move that far after being shot. That leaves only one possible explanation. What a completely foolish line of foolish thoughts from a fool, really foolish fool. I'm not right. Then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill? Huh? Who? Hey. Person that attacked first with the merchant intent would be. Go to try this. Ah, huh. here in this room, contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can only be one explanation. 
There was a fur person here. It was that fur person who killed both Mr. Friday and Mr. Rell. And set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. That fur person is the real culprit. Miles Edgeworth, there's just one thing you're missing. Evidence, correct? Exactly. Everything you've said up to until now is nothing but a story played in your head. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove that there was a fur person involved in this crime? Of course. If fur person was truly here. That fact would have resolved would resolve a glaring contradiction. Proof that has been and this has been all that that proof that this has all been a setup. Made it look like they killed each other. I'll present it. Lay bare the final piece of the puzzle that's not yet in place. I feel like I'm gonna have to present something, and I may maybe get it wrong. What is this? What is the piece that proves that there was a third person involved? Take that! Ah, boy. The gun in Mr. Friday's hand and the plastic bag has a spot on it. These two items point to the presence of a fur person. How so? We call Detective Gumshoe's testimony. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. There wasn't a struggle in this room. Then there shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground. Meaning that someone else must have deliberately scattered them around. Do you not see the possibility in this? Disregarding the gun for the moment. There is a high probability that blood, a blood spatter when a knife was is used on a person. If the culprit held a, the knife of a plastic bag around it, they could use the bag to catch any blood spatter from when they withdrew the knife. Then by spreading a few more plastic bags around, mixing the bloody one with them, in with them, sorry. And arranged the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two. They were able to conceal their presence. Ah! Looks like we still got a long way to go in this investigation. Yes. Objection! What the heck is up with you, pal? Mr. Bond, I find you place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. What? What? What is the mean? What's the meaning of this? <laughs> Looks like you're not the you're not man enough to discipline your own subordinates. Don't you dare! That detective claims he was there, standing in front of the door the entire time. But I have it on good authority that it was all a jammed lie. Miss you, I ask that you please explain that last statement. I'll let his honor explain it himself. I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you! Remember he says there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Pan. So I ask you, why would the detective who was supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie. I'm sure. Did you? Did you kill for today? Oh! Of course not, sir! It would appear that the one who set this whole crime scene up is that detective. Which basically renders his testimony a complete lie and wholly foul and valid. It looks like your perfect logic has just come crumbling down, Miles. <sighs> I was in the hallway at the time, but I didn't hear a single people of struggle. Is that statement really a lie? Detective Gumshoe? Now I a suspect in the murder of two men. Now I spit out the truth, or so help me. I, I, I haven't liked anyone, sir! Honest!
I already was there. I was in the hallway the whole time. Hold it. Detective Bad, I ask you to please do not act without my permission. After all, I am the one that's that is heading up this investigation, am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. All I want is for this investigation to run perfectly. Perfection is the only wish of a disciple of the fun, car of fun karma, after all. Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into custody, I'd like to set the record straight on something. And what's that? Hmm. What should I ask this Gumshoe about? Detective Gumshoe? I take it that no one else was in the, in that hallway at any time, correct? Huh? Oh, of course not, pal! You're being awfully defensive. Might you be hiding something from me? Watch your mouth, pal! Alright. I can't- you can't go gr around saying stuff like that about me without any evidence. Hmm. I suppose you're right. I have no evidence at this point. Mouse eyes for- sorry. How can you be losing a battle of wits with this detective? You're the Skris, Sark. Maybe we should ask about something else. Detective Gumshoe, why were you missing from the hallway for a span of time? Look, pal! Like I said, I was there the whole time, okay? If there is testimony against you that. Oh, Sadsworth! Why are you missing your time with completely useless question? With completely useless question? Hmm? The only logical reason as to why he was absent is that he was busy committing the crime. Anyone who says otherwise is a fool! Dirk. It's supposed to be that. I suppose... It's the one thing I'd like to cl I'd like clarified. Is Detective Gumshoe's motive for committing this crime? Hmm. Motive? Huh. I'm sure. You got a grudge against for a day or some or anything? No, sir! Not me! Not a single buffing against Mr. Furday, sir! Is that a fact? Objection. You really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gumshoe? I'm telling you, I am not lying! The more unnatural you act, the more suspicious you become, you know. What a motive, Edgeworth. I have one for you, right here. Would you please share it with us? However... Be forewarned that I won't hesitate to object to flight of fantasy. Flight of fantasy. Because I'm in all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. <laughs> You're serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me, so I'll humor you with a little corporate practice. It was about a week ago. I saw Detective get chewed out by a little fur day in front of the pinnick. He stood there super pale as fur day yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nipwit. A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for a perfect explanation? You're totally misunderstood me, pal. No matter how much I like it, I could never hold a grudge. Quiet. You can't trust anything you say. Er. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with the motive she's proposed, per se. 
There's some gaps in her logic that need to be filled in. Miss Yu's perfect explanation may not be so perfect after all. Okay. What's that? Oh, Callisto Yu joins the party. Hold it! Oh, we could go. Alright. Then you and Detective Gumshoe are acquaintances? No way. I only met him in person today. And how did you know about Detective Gumshoe? Oh, I've seen him around before. Hold it! Mr. Verde was upset. Yeah. You know what else? Verde isn't exactly known to get angry often. <laughs> but he was totally beat red in the face. <clears throat> and the offending detective just stood there, pale as a ghost, like he was about to die. Just like the face he's speaking now, right? Uh, I'm completely innocent, I tell you. The poor man. <laughs> <clears throat> it was quite the crimes the scene with the detective. You just sit there, watching this unfold in front of you? Yeah. I have to say it was pretty enjoyable too. So you can, it's really enjoyable. I have to say it was pretty enjoyable too. But that's why... Sorry. When the attack... Sorry. But that's why when I saw the detective earlier, I could... I knew to stay clear of it. Stay clear of it. No way. I thought it was because I had something stuck on my fist! <laughs> what you do? Huh? What I've got stuck on my face? Let's start with your eyes, nose, mouth. Oh, and those ridiculous eyebrows. Huh? <laughs> oh, Ben. I see if your head is just so much fun. Too much fun. Miss you, if you don't mind, I'd like to return to your testimony now. Sure, why not? Hmm, to cut a detective's salary right off the bat like that. I'm not really familiar with the way you guys relate. But that, but it's not a common practice. <laughs> Speaking of cutting my salary, didn't your friend do that to me earlier too? I suppose I did. It's only natural to cut a worthless detective's salary down to their actual worth. My father can even fire anyone, new or old, with a snap of his finger. Do you think maybe that's reason enough for detectives to hit you people? Well, I guess they really shouldn't cut people's pay. Detective Pod, don't tell me Mr. Von Karma cut your salary earlier. I call your explanation- you call your explanation perfect? Ah! Is it not to your liking? Unfortunately, it's just not up to my standards. Oh? Is there something you want me to clarify in that case? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Well, hold on for now. 
Maybe I should wait and listen to what she has to say for a bit longer. The type of gums you certainly had moved the kill of her day. However, there is just one thing I can't wrap my head around this explanation. I'll just have to force me to explain herself fully. Wait, we're all in the middle? All right, if you can clear this one up for, for me, this one thing up for me. I understand that Gumshoe's potential motive for killing Mr. For a day. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Rel? His motive for killing Mr. King Rel? Like I would know. Hmm. If there was no clear motive for both the murder of the murders, then I doubt this incident would have occurred. Would you agree? Is there anyone else who might have... Who might have had a grudge against either of the two men? Or should we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have, absolute, I have absolutely no idea. What? That's impossible. You must know something. <laughs> Please not glare me like that. It makes me laugh. I didn't even do anything and you're all right laughing away? But anyway. When I see it, as long as he had a move to kill one of the two. This crime would have played it like the way it did anyway. Oh? Would you care to explain your logic? And this time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. Perfect this, perfect that. Not being so uptight. Or set a request, uh, request a trend, trend for being a pro karma. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, I demand you shut the screw woman up. I wish you both be quiet for just one second. <clears throat> oh well. I guess I'll just have to explain it to you kids. What if I kill the man? There is no one out there for who wanted to kill both Mr. Friday and Mr. Rail. All of you really all you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Rail, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Friday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity. And set up to make it look like they killed each other they had killed each other. I wonder if that's really true. Is there no one? out there with a grudge against both men. I should take another hard look at the evidence for this, from this morning's case. Second KG-8 incident, as people are calling it, involving an emissary staff member. And the two men who both wound up as suspects in that case. In the case. Is there someone else I'm overlooking who is somehow related to them? When did we get to the middle? Oh, huh. well, anyway. So there is no one else who might have a grudge against both Mr. Friday and Mr. Rell? I suppose no one. It's a bit of a stretch. But I'm pretty sure no one like that was here in this corporate house today. She's lying through her teeth. We just saw someone like that here earlier. Nice, you don't need to prove that the killer had a grudge against both men. Hold it. Some of a grudge against one of the men? Is that in that case, aren't there plenty of people, other people who fit the bill? Sure, after all, who doesn't guard their scorn from another simple simply by being alive? There is one thing 
So, but there, but sorry, but the only one who held a grudge and acted upon it by killing was Detective Gumshoe. Here. Furthermore. Hold it. So you're saying that he was basically silenced? Aren't you glad you managed to avoid the same fate, Your Honor? Why, if you had been the one to witness the blood-covered detective... <laughs> what?! Took the gumshoe?! You would kill even me?! What?! Oh, I, I could never do something in several as that, Your Honor. No need for even... There's... Objection. There's no need for even a second of deliberation! I will run down my... My friend here! I'm just... Your Honor, take a look around. We're not in the court right now. It would be greatly appreciated if you would stay here with us in reality. Alright! Please forgive me! I know not what I do! <laughs> and you there, Miss Yi. Hurry up and continue with your testimony. If you fail to do so, I will whip you in the ship. <laughs> That's nice. It's kind of like fun, actually. Anyway, Detective Gumshi had to arrest the witness, Mr. Sorrell. Hold it! I didn't do it, pal! No hard feelings, but I don't think we can take the word of a criminal short seriously. But I can't even begin to think of ways to set up a crime scene. I suppose you do lack the desired tactical mind required to do such a thing. Mm. Why do you have to kick a man when he's down, pal? <laughs> you should put yourself down, detective. You're a big boy. I bet you fall up all by yourself, right? Yeah, that's right. And I worked real hard on that, too. I think this proves one thing about the detective. He has the... The mental accuracy of a worm. I have to admit, her explanation makes sense. However, there is something she overlooked in her testimony. I should present that piece of evidence to see if I can make her see the truth. Alright. Oh, sorry. Okay, cool. Miss Yu, I believe there is someone you overlooked in making your statement. Or rather, is it because you'd rather not bring this person up? What do you mean? We are looking for someone with a reason to kill both Mr. Friday and Miss Ra Mr. Rail. I can think of at least one person that fits the bill. He has a suspect. So he was a suspect in the original KG-8 incident. And a member of the Co Kodof Kofani Ambassador Seth, Mr. Mene Kochin. That's right, the fiery man who came to visit you earlier in the hallway, out in the hallway. The man who killed a member of the Kodofani Ambassador Seth, Mr. Rail. And the man who was l the lead prosecutor of the KG-8 incident, Mr. Furday. Are you telling me that Mr. Cochin has no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well... I suppose he might have a reason or two. Hey, cover for me, pal! You cover for me, pal? Maybe you're not such a bad guy after all. Don't get ahead of yourself! You're so suspect, make no mistake about that. Perfect evidence, the perfect testimony. These are the only things I wish to uphold. But I didn't do it! <laughs> you will stay under my authority and go investigate Ma Mr. Manny Co- She informed me. And remember, I will not be very forgiving should any of this look out- You want to investigate Cochin? you just be wasting your time. And why is that? Cochin must- What's up in the viewing, viewing gallery? Why seen the child? So I'm told. Every cop in this place has been keeping an eye on the guy since he arrived. 
and the only real suspect we still we have is still Detective Gumtree. I suppose so. No oh, way! Come on, Detective Bot. You gotta believe me, sir. I really was not at home the whole time, sir. I never took a single step into this room, sir. Okay. Then are you saying there was someone else who passed through the hallway? I, I oh, there was someone else, sir. Then why should I believe you didn't do it? That is one incredibly foolish detective standing right in front of the cr of a crime scene all by himself. It's as good as a confession of guilt. I have to admit, it's a bit strange. Most criminals would fabricate some sort of lie to escape their crimes. And if that detective really wanted to prove that he is innocent, I think he would go with the very least over up I spaced out while on duty or the like. Come on, Gumshi, time for your interrogation. Detective Bad. Miles Edgeworth, I will go on ahead and report this to Papa. No, as I say, is that right, one? <laughs> well, I suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now, huh? What we do, Miss Yu, there is something I'd like to speak with you about. What is it? Everything is neat and tidy on top of the table. Wait. The television has been left on to restore the crime scene, of course. I will stay on until the police are finished with the investigation. Can you think nothing of saving electricity? How bothersome. As it breeze is blowing through this window. We need to exchange it with the sniffing, sniffing atmosphere of this crime scene. Sniff, stifling. I have set these two men up to make it look like they killed each other. There's one thing I cannot forgive. It is the desecration of the dead. Cheap sofa. I should buy one for my off. If I should buy one for my office, I'll be sure to select a more luxurious, a much more luxurious one. These plastic bags look like they fell here by chance at the first glance. All of them, with the exception of the bloody one, are just camouflage. I suppose you can call this a twist of the old to hide the tree, hide in the woods. Hey, Wit! Ezra! Where are you off to? Aren't you the one who wanted to talk? Oh, yes. Sorry for that. So, what do you want to ask me about? Case the current case of the murder cult of an emissary staff member. I've heard that people have begun calling it the second KG-8 incident. Only among you law enforcement types. And, what about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KG-8 incident. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what was reported in the papers. No, I believe you know much more, since you are directly tied to the KG-8 incident. I appreciate it if you would stop with the false accusations. Baseless icebergs are, base are useless both inside and outside the courtroom, don't you know? I do. I also know I do have a leg to stand on here. <laughs> Think you can stop making that ultra serious face in front of me? Er, if you could please stop laughing for just one second. I'm not going to make any headway like this. I'm just going to have to show her exactly how related to the KG Indians she is. Miss Shu! I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG-8 incident. That, that that's your proof? Very well, then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I'm related to the KG-8 incident? Your connection to the KG-8 incident. 
for, is for the victim. The victim's name is Stacy Yu. You will note that she has the same last name as you. Can you really still tell me with a straight face that you are not related to this case? <laughs> Sorry, we're not related. What? Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look on your face. I couldn't help but. <laughs> It's you? I ask that you please tell me the truth. Ahem. <clears throat> Alright. I'll tell you everything I know. As you guess, the one who reported the smuggling activities of the Amala group was my sister, CCU. As I thought. And she was killed right before she was to testify at the impending trial by Manny Cochin. But because he was tried once, and was acquitted, he gets to live the rest of his cushy life completely carefree. All because of a lack of evidence? No, I heard that the evidence to convict him didn't exist. What? I heard that from Mr. Fernandez himself after Mr. Cushing's trial was over. Apparently, a man on black made off with, most important, with the most important piece of evidence. Then the evidence has been tampered with? Isn't that just like a cr- No, to do something like that? The smuggling ring, ring being run out of the Amano group by one of the secretaries? They built Mr. Koji Knight. Or sorry, they were in league with each other all along. How big was that smuggling ring? Was it a large operation? I don't really know. Which is why I wanted to become a lead, a lead defense. On this case that people are calling the second KG-8 incident. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. I mean... You think this case has nothing to do with the smuggling ring? I don't know what to think. Why did Mr. Cochin want to meet you earlier? Actually, he came to watch the trial. Apparently, he only found out that I was to the fence lawyer on this case after he arrived. He figured he should say hi. Ah, one other thing. Looks like he couldn't resolve anything this time either. Too bad. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh boy, stop it with that sc with the scary face already. I'm fine, really. I'll give him a good slap across the face. I give him a good slap across the face. Why is he talking about slapping? As she laughs away, it's kind of creepy. <clears throat> yeah, but just as Mr. Bot said, he's not related to the double murder. I asked her, and then people in the gallery claimed that he was in a seat the entire time. Woke up a cruel fit. Well, that's about all I know. <laughs> Sorry. Guess I wasn't much help, huh? That's not true. I'm sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your life. <laughs> You're really... They are too serious for your own good. You really need to learn to relax. We wouldn't want you to die of stress, would we? Thank you for the advice. But there's no need for to worry. I work my own way. And I will catch this criminal in my own way as well. You'll see. <laughs> Look at you! Your game is on, ready to go! Uh, I'm making no such face! Did you know? Laughter is the best medicine, Edgeworth. Did you get tired of making such a serious face all the time? I'm, char I'm charged with making sure that all the cr criminals of this world are found guilty. I have no need for laughter. There you go, making that face again. Oh well. I've gotta get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. KG-8 incident and this murder investigation. It is my belief that these two cases are related to each other somehow. Plus that detective, Detective Gumshoe, is obviously lying even though the lie is hurting his chances. Clearly this case is far from over. 
Whether or not the detective is, a mur is the murderer can only be determined once I completed my perfect investigation. Mr. Von Karma, I swear to uphold your honorable name, or my name isn't Miles Edgeworth. Okay, that'll be it. I'm a wrap up, so. Yeah. Not doing too bad, actually. Alright, we're still in the middle, I think. Yeah, all mercy retrieved. Yep. So, I'll wrap things up from here. Hope you guys this week. We'll be back on this Friday. Uh, yeah, we'll be back on this Friday. And then, yeah. So, we should be able to finish Turn of Remembrance to, on Friday. All being well. And the finale is going to. And then we have the finale stuff. But that'll be, that'll be, we'll figure it out later. All right, Ralph, thanks over here. Hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye.